my late father was from Scranton. And every year of my life, until I guess I became an adult, I was in Scranton. I was baptized in Scranton. We spent Christmases, we spent summers on Lake Winola, a small lake near Tunkhannock, uh, which is outside of Scranton. And my dad went to Penn State, my brother went to Penn State. I've had a lot of wonderful times in Pennsylvania driving every road you can imagine, uh, seeing so much of this beautiful state. And I am so fortunate that my son-in-law is from Philadelphia, so... The, the connections just keep going on, and Pennsylvania has been very, very kind, both to my husband and to me, and we will never forget it. And I want you to know, if I'm so fortunate enough to be the nominee of the Democratic Party, at the convention that Philadelphia is hosting, that I will work my heart out to represent you to win the election in November and then to go to work for you in the White House. Now, you know, I want you to understand what it is I hope we can do together because there's work to be done. And it's important work. And it starts with the economy. We need more good jobs with rising incomes for everybody here in Pennsylvania and across America who wants to get ahead and stay ahead through their efforts. And I think it's a fact that you should tell your friends and anybody else who you worry might be thinking about voting on the other side of the aisle. <laughs> Just tell them, our economy always does better when we have a Democrat in the White House. And you know, we've got some real good examples of that. You don't have to go back to ancient history. You can go back to the 1990s. 23 million new jobs, incomes rose for everybody. And that's the point I want to stress. You know, it's not enough to diagnose the problem, you gotta know how to solve the problem. So incomes went up, not for those only at the top, but middle class families, working families, poor families. The median family income in America went up 17%. The median African-American family income went up 33% in those eight years. Now some might say, okay, well that was then, this is now, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The Supreme Court installed a Republican president by the name of George W. Bush.
to opioid addictions. And it's time we said we need enough treatment and recovery and intervention and support so that we save lives and we treat addiction like the health problem that it is. Now, just about everything I've said, the Republicans either disagree with or they don't talk about. So I want you to pay close attention to them because they are telling you what they want to do to our country. Make no mistake about it. They want to turn the clock back on every right we have. They don't want to deal with a lot of the issues that I know are important. So let me tell you where I stand. I will defend a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. children to gun violence and in some cases it was as a result of police action in most cases it was because of the use of guns on our streets in our homes in a way that causes the death of 33,000 people every year that is an epidemic if there were a disease killing 33,000 people in America every year, we would figure out what to do about it. And you know what is really, what is really sad about it is that we can do this consistent with the Second Amendment. It's the gun lobby that tries to keep gun owners all anxious and upset because what's their goal? Their goal is to help sell even more guns to people. So we're going to work for comprehensive background checks, closing the gun show loophole, closing the online loophole, closing what's called the Charleston loophole, and reversing, reversing the vote in Congress that gave special protections to gun makers and sellers, unlike anything anybody else has any in any business or industry in America. And these common sense measures, 92% of Americans and 85% of gun owners support. So we have got to come together around this and work for these reforms. I read the news before I got here today. You had 12 shootings in Philadelphia over the weekend. Four people killed, a police officer shot. And the, the story that was just so heartbreaking was the father <clears throat> handling his gun and it went off and killed his four-year-old daughter. Because of those 33,000 deaths, we have homicides, we have suicides, and we have all these tragic avoidable accidents. So we have work to do to save lives. 
and that's what I'm going to be focused on to do. next Tuesday, you're also voting for a commander-in-chief. You're voting for who you believe can keep our country safe, protect Americans, lead the world with our friends and allies, and it's really important that you take that into consideration. And I have to tell you, as somebody who was a senator from New York on 9-11, someone who served as your Secretary of State for four years. When I hear, when I hear Donald Trump and Ted Cruz talk about international issues, I mean, what they say is not only offensive, it's downright dangerous.